Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the spine and leaf data center network design. So you can see the traditional campus design here. I covered this in the last lecture with the core distribution and access layers. And in the example here, we've got the main building and building one. And we could have the main building now is actually being a data center with our servers in there. And with the old style traditional data center environments, this traditional core distribution and access layer would work just fine where we had mostly north-south traffic flows. What I mean by north and southbound traffic flows is where the traffic is mainly flowing up and down. So traffic would be going up and down the data center and then down to the clients in the other buildings. So you can see here it's going up from the building through the access and distribution layer to the core layer and then back down from the core layer to the distribution and access layer. So you can see with our north southbound traffic flows, that's going from the clients over here to the servers in the data center. And the traditional campus design works really well where most of your traffic flows are going in that north and southbound direction. But in modern data centers, there's a trend nowadays where we see a lot more traffic going in an east and westbound direction. And what I mean by that is between the actual servers themselves in the data center. The reason for that is that data centers are getting bigger. There's a lot of virtualization now, so many virtual servers, and those servers might be clustered where an app is spread across multiple different servers, and all of those servers need to talk to each other. You also might have an application, for example, which has got a web-based front end on a server, and that's talking to a back-end database on another server as well. So again, that traffic, rather than going north and southbound through the different layers, would be going east-westbound between the different servers themselves. And while the traditional campus design works well, where most of your traffic is north and southbound, it's not so good where a lot of your traffic is east and westbound. And as I said, in modern data centers, you do have a lot of east and west flowing traffic. So because of that, there is another network design that's very popular in data centers now, and that is the spine leaf data center design. Now, you're probably looking at this now and thinking, wait a minute, Neil, that looks pretty much exactly the same as a collapsed core and distribution layer with the traditional model. And yes, right now it does. So going back to the traditional model again, you can see here that we pair up our distribution layer switches and we also pair up our core layer switches. That gives us some load balancing and it also gives us redundancy there as well because we wouldn't want to have a single point of failure. And this example for the spine leaf design right now, it looks the same right now, but the thing is that it's actually designed where we can get additional scalability and better performance for our east-west traffic flows. And what we can do is with the scalability, we can just add on additional switches in the east and west direction. So you can see here, if I've got a larger data center, I can just add additional spine switches and additional leaf switches. Now with the spine leaf design, We've got the spine switches here, which are at a higher level in the hierarchy. We don't have our servers connected there. Our servers are connected into our leaf layer switches. And we have got a mesh between, so all of our leaf switches are connected to all of our spine switches. And as I said, it's really easy to scale this out just by adding additional switches in the east and west direction. So this gives us the good scalability. It also gives us good performance as well 
because if any of the servers in the data center need to talk to each other, it's only going to be a maximum of two hops away. Meaning if, if for example, this server here is talking to the server on the right, it's one hop at the spine switch and then goes down to another hop at the leaf switch. So that gives us the good performance and also the good scalability where we've got a lot of east and west bound traffic. It still works well. We are still going to have north and south bound traffic here as well, but it does give us those gains where we've got that additional east and west traffic. Okay, that's everything I needed to tell you about the Spine Leaf data center network design. I'll see you in the next lecture where we're going to be back onto our main campus networks, which are the main focus of the CCNA exam. We'll start getting into detail on our VLANs. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.